So this is the part where I want to be super careful. <gasps> here we go. Battery going in. Oh man, do we have a problem here, guys. Ah. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Thomas. Before we get started on today's repair, I want to give a quick shout out to all of you who have recently subscribed to the channel. It really does make a huge difference. Thank you, thank you. Today's repair is pretty interesting. This is a, an alarm clock that appears to be of German origin, I think. It is non-operational. I'm gonna guess that it is of late 70s era. It's got a lot of cosmetic imperfections, but before we get to that stuff, I do wanna try restoring the plastic, but before we get to that stuff, we're gonna try to take a look at the mechanical and electrical side of this. As you can hear, it's got a little bit of a clunk. So uh, let's get to it. Okay guys, so here's what we're working with today. As you can see, the numbers have not rolled into a flat position, which tells me that, tells me we've got a problem inside. Eam selection, are these, I don't know if those are seconds or the date. I'm not sure exactly. A lot of wear and tear on the top. You can see some of this I think will wipe off, but a lot of it is scuffs. You can see it when I run the light across it. Missing a battery door. Looks like it takes a C battery. And uh, I see some corrosion in there. Something's not right with the battery port. But look at this cool, this turns on the alarm. That's pretty neat. Kind of shaky. We're gonna see what we can do about that. Looks like somebody's been in here before because look what we have. This is one of, I think, one of the clips that holds in the, the color behind the front plate. So maybe someone tried to remove that at some point. Anyway, let's get into it. Okay, we've got mechanical, mechanical design. This seems loose. Ah, I see. This plastic piece is broken off. This metal piece is kind of corroded, slid in like that to make contact with the battery. So we need to restore contact to the battery right now. So I've got some metal scraps. This is thin enough that we can cut it, we can bend it, glue it but I think it's conductive enough that it'll work. This is a piece of plastic that we could shape and put here but wouldn't it be great if we had a thinner piece of plastic? So I'm gonna go into the parts bin. It's too heavy. These are just random plastic and metal parts that I've salvaged from other things that I've taken apart and you'd be surprised how often these come in handy. Oh look at this. A thin piece of plastic that we could glue in right here. So what I'm thinking here, guys, is something like this. Actually, you know what? That kind of just sticks there. Okay, so I have some connectors of various kinds. And I'm wondering if we can just take these two wires, put them together into one connector, and attach that to the piece of metal that we can then glue in here. I think I'm complicating this too much. Like I've mangled this piece of metal twisted it and cut it and everything, and now it is unusable. So whenever I reach that point in a project, I really like to take a step back and say, okay, wait a minute, maybe there's a, maybe there's a simple way, simpler way to do this. So the problem is that the positive side of the battery has this nub, and that can contact any piece of metal. But the negative side needs to have some sort of indentation to reach out and touch the negative side of this. And so that's what's gonna be a little bit tricky here. If I can bend this piece of metal, I think it will automatically create that. But I have to be able to keep everything in place. So maybe the answer here is to just bend this over and put a piece of foam behind it so it automatically behaves as a spring. Then we'll have to reinforce the back somehow. Turn this up a little bit. So the concept here is something like this. Actually leaning towards this thinner piece of metal, this will bend over the back of that. I can put a little bend in this to give it a little spring against the back, back of the battery. I recently got this kit of countersunk machine screws for exactly this kind of work. Because I was tired of screw heads sticking up, I wanted a flush surface. So my thought is that we can grab one of these M2 countersunk screws and screw this whole thing in. 
What I don't have, what I really wish I had, was either some Loctite or some nylon nuts so that I know when I put this on, it's not gonna come off. So I think I'm gonna put two nuts on here. I made that hole really close to the edge, but it looks like the plastic has held. Oh, and I forgot to tighten this back up. Oh, the plastic's breaking, guys. Look at that, the plastic's breaking. Okay, so we've reinforced the plastic. Now comes this part. So is that gonna fit in like that? Yes, yes it is. Drill a hole here, and then I think I can just attach these wires through this right here. Okay, not exactly a precision instrument, but I think it's gonna get us there. So we've got this wired up. Um, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but I think it's gonna fit this. We're gonna try it now. So we're gonna put a battery in it. This is a fresh battery. Okay, here we go. Battery going in. And look what we got here, guys. We've got mechanical movement. So I believe the clock is working now. Unfortunately, the, the one through six minute hand is a little bit off. It's not perfectly flat with the front of the clock. And it's not even with the other numbers, and so I couldn't figure out why. So back to square one, I need to sort of think about this. But the battery does appear to be working now with our sort of new battery rig, which is great. I think what I'm gonna do is take this battery out, leave the mechanical part aside for just a moment. It could be just gummed up gears, I'm not sure. And work a little bit on the case and sort of um, some of the cosmetic issues while I turn that problem over in my head. This is the part where I want to be super careful. Ooh. I actually thought a lot more of this was going to be surface dirt, but it's not coming off. So I'm going to up the ante a little bit and try this new technique that I've been wanting to try. Let me show you what I have. Okay, so I've over the years sort of been researching plastic restoration because almost every device I work on has plastic that is compromised in some way. Sometimes the patina is kind of cool, like this is discolored in a way that I, I actually like. But the scuffs and things like that, the scuff marks, it'd be really nice to be able to get, you know, get that stuff off. So, you know, some people say, oh, you can use a heat gun to kind of take off some of the the worst of it, I've actually tried Magic Eraser, which is pretty good, but it leaves a matte finish. And so for glossy plastic, you'd have to do the whole thing. But I'm gonna try something new. I'm gonna try, um, this is Meguiar's uh, plastic restoration for external plastic on cars. I got these discs of different abrasiveness. I don't know if this is gonna work, but let's give it a shot. So I realize it might be good to have a before and after. So here you can see some of the scuffs, a lot of scuff work. And yes, the plastic is discolored. I kind of like the yellow green tint to it. Here you can see the original color back there. You can see the line. This is closer to the original color and then the yellow part of course is, is what it's become. Let's see what this stuff does for us. bladder everywhere, which I guess I should have seen that coming. <laughs> I guess I should have seen that coming. Oh, okay, not, it's not foolproof. Okay, you gotta be kind of careful with this thing because it's hard to control this. This would be much easier on a, like a wire wheel that you had a polishing disc on where the machine stays in one position and won't move, it's heavy. Because this, there's too many variables and what happens is it slips and like, you know, it dings the, it dings the plastic which is exactly the opposite of what we're trying to do. 
Okay, so generally speaking, I'm pretty happy with that technique. I mean, it definitely didn't get the scuff marks out, but it did polish it. I still think a polishing wheel would be better, especially for something small like this. It's very unwieldy. With the drill gun, there's too much outside of your control. Again, I actually can see where it started to get, make its way through the yellow, the yellowing. So it was taking off some of the, like the top layer of the plastic, which is interesting. Presumably you could do this long enough where uh, it would restore it to its original color, which is pretty cool. Okay, so back to the clock itself. It seems to have a problem when it needs to turn over an hour. This sets the clock. And sometimes this gear feels like it's just spinning. And then it'll catch again and start moving the minutes again when I'm setting the clock. Okay, coming up on, here's 50. That rolls over fine. Now we should come up on the hour change. 59. And then it gets very stubborn. It won't go anymore. But the mechanism is still going. So the clock stops. It can't handle turning over an hour. So there's some sort of gearing problem or some sort of gearing problem or maybe a lubrication problem. So we're going to have to take the whole thing apart. So like always, I'm using this Weeha bit set. Like a hundred bucks on Amazon. I think it's an awesome, awesome set of tools. I'm gonna put a link down in the, in the description. I use it on every single project. When I first got it, I was like, oh, what, you know, how good can it be really? How, you know, how much different can it be than the cheap stuff? And I have to say that it is different. It's precise. The bits don't break, they don't dull. You don't strip any screws. It makes a big difference. Aha! Huh. These small gears here on the inside appear to be chewed up. And they are going to be catching here on these. That is why I'm having the problem. Oh man, do we have a problem here, guys. Ah! Look at how the teeth on this inner gear are chewed up. Those should be straight, and they are all, they're almost all damaged. <sighs> I'm not sure how to solve this, to be honest. I guess in theory we could 3D print another gear, but can 3D printing handle teeth this small? I mean, you can see how tiny they are. I don't think so. I think this might be the end of this project. I'm not sure how to get around this. Super frustrating. Okay guys, I've got it mostly all put back together. The clock works great for 60 minutes. And then when it hits the hour, you just can't overcome that. We weren't successful on this one. We did, however, learn quite a bit about plastic restoration. And uh, I think that there's a variation of these things that could work in the future to bring some of these plastics back to life. So thanks for watching, everyone, and we'll see you on the next one.